Hi, I'm Bob Mankoff, cartoon editor of the New Yorker magazine with a very innovative cartoon lounge. This week, our innovators' issue is on the newsstand. What's in it? I don't know, maybe 40 innovators under 40, or 20 innovators under 20, or maybe it's two innovators under two. Two genius babies, by their imagination and innovation, are going to change the world. Of course, those aren't the features that are in it. It wouldn't be very innovative. We've all seen lists like that endlessly now. And I think that's the problem with innovation. Uh, it's very hard to come up with something new and what you usually come up with something that's been done before and you think it's innovative. There's a great Leo Cullum cartoon like that. It has a guy uh, talking to a boss saying, I'll be happy to give you innovative thinking. What are the guidelines? So when new cartoons come in, they, they often want to know, how many cartoons should I do every week? And I say, mm, I do 10. And sometimes they say, why 10? And I say, because nine out of 10 things in life don't work out. The way you get ideas, good ideas, is by getting a lot of bad ideas. That's just the nature uh, of uh, innovation. Here's some ideas I've had that have nothing to do with cartooning that might be bad and might be good. All these revolving doors that you see in big cities and department stores in which people are going through it, essentially a flood of people, uh, made me think that why not just attach the spinning door to a generator to generate electricity. Then I was in a quiet car the other day I wanted to talk on the phone, which we're not allowed to do. And I realized, you know, you can listen on the phone, right? You can put your, the earbuds in and you can listen, but you can't talk. So there's got to be some way to solve that problem. And I thought maybe from the bottom of the phone, a little cone that comes out, a cone of silence. Okay, so I'm calling out to you out there for your ideas, for inventions you think, damn, that should be invented. But also, frankly, to the most creative, innovative group of people I know, the cartoonists. Let's see what they come up with. Okay, today's Ask Bob. The question, since humor is triggered differently for each individual, how do you, as editor, ensure that each week's cartoons are not just a reflection of what's funny to you? Well, humor really isn't triggered differently in each individual. You've got 300 million people in the United States. If you made a comedy movie, you'd have to make 300 million of them. It's not going to work. But I think overall, you're right, there are different senses of humor. Some people like wacky. Some people like a, a really tight joke where you really absolutely get the punchline. Some people like topical uh, material. Some people like timeless material. What I try to do as a cartoon editor, what The New Yorker tries to do as well, is to some extent be eclectic and satisfy all those constituencies. We never do, but we really try.